Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the best time of the season in the Spanish lower leagues. It's playoff time. Today we've got our first promotion playoff match. I'm back in Guadilla del Monte. You might recognise the palace behind me for Inter de Madrid against Tenerife B. Really excited about this, so let's get along to the ground and get this going. Right, here we are. It's just dawned on me as I'm doing this that I'm basically just repeating the video from the last time I was here. So I'll try and change that when I get inside. Didn't realise this the last time, but you could just about sprint straight onto the pitch. Right now, because this is the second time I've been here, I'm going to save you the club history spiel. If you're interested, you can click on the link that's in the description though. So Inter have been in the Tercera for eight seasons in total, and this is the first time that they've actually been fighting for promotion come the end of the campaign. So they are in the group champions playoff, and if they basically win this two-legged tie against Tenerife for they're up. If they don't, then they'll go into the non-champions route with about another thousand teams that finish second, third and fourth in the other groups. So Inter won Group 7 by a point from Getafe B. They had by far and away the best away record in the league. Their home record was a little bit less impressive. It was actually the worst amongst the top four teams. But they only conceded eight goals in 19 home matches and they'll hope that will set them up for a first leg victory today. Now there are so many tercera groups, I've not actually been following a lot of them that closely, but I can tell you that Tenerife B won Group 12 by a six point margin and they actually go into today's game in really good form. They won their last two matches by a 9-0 aggregate score and they lost only one of their last 11 away games. I've also heard from guys in the know that they have a pretty tasty team. So I think today's clash should be pretty interesting. Right, I think the whole town and their dogs are in force for this game. Pretty decent turnout I have to say. I find myself nestled in with the uh, Tenerife B fans. Sounds like it may be decent. Switch that one. Go down. No space. <laughs> Go! Oh. Closest we've come so far. Two chances in quick succession for Inter there. One just came off the bar. Start to heat up a little bit. Literally. Stop before. I said to this guy around for some sort of belt. He's going up for a punch up. Oh, oh, skin them, skin them. Find your man now. Take it out. There you go. Oh. Inter are knocking on the door at the moment. Is the breakthrough going to come? Oh, I've got to ping it. Oh, great block. Watching the wrong game, I think. There's been a goal over in the kids' game. Right, everybody stopped watching this game. I don't think everyone's watching this one. Go on, son, go and kick him in the knackers. Although, with the size of the goals and the size of the goalkeepers, there are obviously going to be loads of goals. Let's go pull that. Keepers all the way. Right, so half time, nil nil, and it's probably fair to say it's not been a classic, although it was free entrance, so I guess I can't complain too much. Find a little spot in the shade to do this from, as the sun is absolutely killing me just for a change. So yeah, need to, uh, need to learn my lesson for the next match. Um, yeah, Tenerife, I've been really disappointed with them because I had high hopes uh, just going by what other people had told me, uh, but they're really not showing anything at all. There's not been any link at all between their midfield and their attack. 
and I don't think we've had a single chance to score. Uh, Inter, on the other hand, have been a bit more threatening. Um, long throws into the box have caused a lot of problems, and they've also had a couple of hits from distance, one which clipped the bar, which I didn't manage to get on the on video. Uh, but they've definitely come closer to scoring, so we'll see if that continues in the second half. Uh, they're definitely looking more likely to snatch a first leg victory at the moment in any case. Right, we're back underway. It's got to get better in the second half, surely. Right, minute 46 or 47, and we just had the first effort on goal, I think, from Tenerife, and it was about 10 yards over the bar. There's not one guy in the box, come on. Oh, it's travelling. Oh! Not far away, again for Inter. Getting closer. Oh, right on the edge, I think. Yeah, no penalty. Oh, that's criminal. What a waste. Just had the nearest thing for Tenerife. Goalkeeper hesitated. It was his ball all day long. Striker nearly nipped in between him and the defender. More of a threat from Tenerife in the second half. Finally. This guy's about half here. Oh, what a chance. Smash that. He was all alone in the box there. Straight to the goalie. Very weak. Finally managed to get the best vantage point. There's only 87 minutes being played. Typical. Playoff drama, eh? Right, I have to be honest with you, that was a totally rubbish game. I hyped it up far too much and it was pretty flat for a playoff game. And I guess it was the first leg, so both teams were pretty cagey. And it's all to play for in the second leg. I think the second half was a little bit better in terms of it was a little bit more even, but I don't think either team really hit their potential. Tenerife B did manage to get their attackers to link up a bit better with their midfielders in the second half, and they had a couple of dangerous moments, although that was more as a result of hesitant defending from the home team, to be honest. And it was Inter who had the best of the chances. I think there was one effort near the end that just sneaked wide of the target, but they couldn't quite make the breakthrough. So yeah, be a pretty tense affair next week in the Canary Islands, I would imagine. Now, as you'll have seen, the ground was totally heaving, which I think is not really the norm for that stadium. So it's not really the best ground to watch football from, to, to be honest. You've got the one stand that doesn't run all the way along the side. Uh, that was absolutely packed. Uh, just because it was in the shade basically and the other area where I was at the start of the game behind the goal which obviously had the netting in your way there weren't enough shots on goal really to justify the netting so it was never in danger of getting hit and I think to be honest Peely Wally foreigners like myself should get priority for seats in the shade it should be like pregnant ladies on the bus or the elderly on the bus. Also what to mention, there was actually a decent band of fans over supporting Tenerife. I'm assuming most of them were from Tenerife and living in Madrid, uh, but they didn't really have that much to shout about, unfortunately for them. There was also a few guys that were over from England as well on a kind of a Madrid ground hopping trip. So guys, if you're watching, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Madrid footballing weekend. And Madrid, I've probably said this before, but Madrid's a really great place. If you want to do some ground hopping, you can easily get four or five games in a weekend, depending on how the fixtures are spread out. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, if not the match that much. And I'm fairly sure that the next few videos are going to be 
a little bit better in terms of action on the field. I've probably cursed it again now uh, just by saying that. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to subscribe. Also get following on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram as well. I'll see you guys again soon for the next video.